If you want to improve your editing skills within LumaFusion, keep watching because in today's video I'll be showing you 10 advanced editing tips within LumaFusion and that's going to be everything from keyframes to color grading to green screen to getting those cinematic bars on your video. I'll be covering almost everything you need to know within this app. Get ready, sit back, get ready to learn some awesome tips within LumaFusion. Now on this channel, my goal is to help creators like you learn how to make videos on your smartphone so you can grow an audience, help others, and make money doing what you love. So if that interests you, be sure to subscribe and check out our playlist section. I've already compiled a whole bunch of videos to help you get started making videos on your smartphone. So let's begin this tutorial. And just so you know, if you do come across something that you've already learned, I have all the timestamps down below for all the editing tips so you can easily skip through and get to the content that that you don't know. So the first advanced editing tip is going to be keyframes. Going to be showing you how to use those. And basically what keyframes are is the ability to move text or an image or an object from one point to another point. So let's go into my iPad here. I have a mouse hooked up so you can see what I'm clicking on. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to select this image of me that's already been cut out. And we're just gonna put it here in the timeline. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna move this image across the screen from one point to the other. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this. And to start, I'm just gonna, first of all, shrink it a bit here. We'll say about that size. And we're gonna start it off the screen. So I'm just gonna scroll over and leave it there. Now, on the bottom here, you'll see these plus buttons. These are the keyframe buttons. So what we can do is I can mark there with a keyframe, and you'll notice there's a blue circle there in the bottom left. And what we can do then is scroll through the timeline, and let's say we want my image here at this point to go across the screen and be at the other side. So what I then can do is do my position uh, Y here, or actually X, and what that's gonna do is I can slide it over to here, and it puts another blue dot on the bottom. So what that's gonna do is when we go back to here and click play, it's going to move that image from one side to the other. Which, as you can see, here I come sliding across kind of weirdly. <laughs> but it, I moved across just as it did there. And you can actually do a lot of things with keyframes. Not only just move objects across, but if we wanted at this point, let's say we wanted to increase as well the size of my head if it's not big enough already. <laughs> so now what we can do is when we click play here, not only is it gonna move across, but it's going to resize it at the exact same time. So I click play, I'm gonna slowly grow closer to the camera there. So you can do a lot of different things with keyframes, uh, whether that's moving text across the screen or uh, zooming in and out. You can do a lot of cool things with keyframes. It offers you a lot of different uh, cool techniques that you can do. And actually, I'm going to show you guys some of those cool things you can do with keyframes with our tip number two, which is the copy and paste feature. So let's just first just delete the weird column image there. And we're going to go into this other project to demonstrate the copy and paste feature. So in here, so what I have going on here with keyframes is, well, first I have a transition here of just slide up. And what it's sliding up is this. I just designed this white square. And then what I did was I went over into frame and fit. And I actually cropped it. I went into the cropping settings here, cropped it down. So it's just this little white square here. And then what I did was I used keyframes to make it go from one side to the other. As you can see there, it slides across. And at the same time, this text, I've what I've done is if we go over the frame and fit and cropping, at the same time, it slowly is cropping open at the same time to make it look like that this line is actually revealing the text. So there's an example of some crazy keyframes. But let's say I want this effect, all this cool text thing that I designed, it took me like 15, 20 minutes to make. I want this in another project. And that's where the copy and paste feature comes in really handy. So what I can do is if I click this select button down here, click that, 
and then I'm going to select everything I want to move. So I want this whole text effect to be put into the other project. What I can do is go down to the clipboard. I can click copy. I can go back into my project over here. Click on that. And then what you need to do is just go to the end of your project. Go to the clipboard. Click paste. And there we go. We have this text effect in. And all I have to do is select it all again here. Like this. Grab it. Scroll it over to where I want it in the beginning here. There we go. And now when I click play, I've got my cool text effect into my timeline. So copy and paste, huge, awesome feature that you have. So you can make all these different effects or whatnot in different projects. You can copy them and paste them into other projects. Or if you even want to move different clips that you did in other projects, copy and paste right into your timeline. Awesome feature. Advanced editing tip number three, we're going to look at color grading. So to color grade, all you're going to need to do is click on the clip that you want to color grade, click on the pencil. Go to color and effects, and this is where you're going to be able to color grade your footage. Now to start, what I like to do is go over to user LUTs, uh, and depending if you're filming in Filmic Pro, you could apply one of these LUTs to help you get started color grading. And then there's also a blend feature where you can adjust how powerful the effect is, and they actually have a few different cool filters and whatnot you can apply. Maybe I like edgy, and then I can adjust how much that effect is applied so I can get it just right. And you know what? We're going to stick with Veggie. I like kind of how this looks. So I'm just going to blend it a little bit there like that. And there we go. And then what I'm going to do is go back over here just to this color option. I'm going to click on original. And here I'll have access to all my settings to do color grading. Now I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm some kind of color grading apps expert because I'm not but what I like to do is just kind of mess around with a lot of these knobs see what I like uh, me personally I like things with less contrast because more contrasty it is it's just kind of I don't know everything seems kind of blown out but I like it more of a fade on it where there's just a little bit more of that gray fade uh, so we're gonna do that I'm gonna increase some saturation because I do like saturation and color some vibrance and then you also can access your highlights and shadows and control those as well. Now, also up above, you have access to some different fun effects. Uh, vignette is one I use quite a bit. Uh, you can control the intensity, make it a white vignette or a black one. Uh, I always like a little bit of vignette on my in my corners because I feel like it looks nice. But you also have access to just a lot of fun, cool features in here. Uh, blur effects. You can do different pixels and swirls and whatnot. Uh, and you also have access to green screen, which is something we're going to be getting into in a little bit. Now, once you're done color grading, what I highly recommend is to click this plus button in the corner and save your presets. So we can name this, uh, let's say, Summer Flowers. Now, if we had more clips, and I can save it by clicking the plus here, and there we go. I have the preset saved. Uh, one I have here is Bread Bedroom Not So Pink. I named my color presets weird, but you can have them saved. So that way, if you have more clips, Let's say if I had a second clip like this, which will actually just duplicate this real quick. So let's say I had a second clip here where, oh, now I have to go back into here and do all the same color grading presets. No, because I saved the preset. What I can do is then click over here, presets, summer flowers, and there we go. I have it applied. And that's pretty much color grading in a nutshell. So tip number four, let's talk about adding cinematic black bars to your video. So there's a few different ways you could do it. Uh, you could always import an image, but what I like to do is click on edit, go over to size, uh, frame and fit here. I go over to crop, and then what I like to do is just crop down on the top, maybe 10, and then crop down on the bottom. 10 and there I go I've got the black bars but what I can also do is if I want those black bars to be bigger let's say I want them at 20 I can easily adjust it to 20 and have those really big black bars 
And there we go. Now I have the black bars on my video for a cinematic type look. Tip number five, I'm going to show you how to add social media logos with PNG photos. So sometimes you want to throw up your Instagram right on the screen. I'll be showing you how to do that here within LumaFusion. And what you're going to want to do is go ahead and open up the Chrome web browser. And what you're going to want to do is whatever you want to put up on the screen, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, etc. Uh, you want to search whatever that is followed by PNG. And what that's gonna do is pull up photos that don't have a background. And the way you can make sure that's the case is because, let's say we see this image, it looks white as the background. If I click on it, it changes to the white and gray squares. That's how I know it's a real PNG photo. There's a lot of fakes out there like this, where it already has the background of the white and gray. It's usually not a real PNG photo. so. To make sure it's real, it should have a white background. When you click on it, it's going to switch to those white and gray squares. And you'll find a few different variations out there. So then what you're going to do is when you find one that you like, you're just going to click on it. And you are going to save that image to your gallery. And then we're going to go back into LumaFusion. So then what we're going to do is click on that image. And we're just going to import it into our timeline here. And extend it a little bit. We're going to decrease the size. And as you can see, there is no background on it. It looks nice and sharp. I can move this over here to the corner. And then what we're going to do is add our text overlay title. Click on that. Drag it over here. If it wants to cooperate. There we go. We're going to edit our text here. I'll add my Instagram handle. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is make sure I can see both the Instagram and this so I can line it up like so. There we go. And then what I like to do is I'm just going to zoom in here real quick is I like to go over and add transitions instead of doing keyframes for some things. Uh, so what I'm going to do is click the plus add transition. I'm going to scroll over and do the same for this Instagram ad transition. And then what I can do is click on the transition. I'm going to click presets. And I'm just going to scroll down to slide up. I'm going to do the same for the other one. Click presets. Go to slide up. And then what's going to happen is when we click play here, it's going to slide up and show our Instagram. Which brings us to tip number six, which is how to add green screen effects to your videos. Now, YouTube is a gold mine for tons of green screen videos. So what I did was I downloaded a screen recorder, which there's plenty of free ones on the App Store or a lot of phones just have screen recorders already built in. So I went to YouTube and I screen recorded this green screen subscribe button video. And what I'm going to do is trim it here just so it doesn't show my iPad screen recording it uh, right there. I'm going to trim it from behind as well. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is just drag this over of this video of me talking. Put it right on top like that. I'm going to go to edit. We're going to go to the green screen effects. We're under color and effects here. Uh, I'm going to click on green screen. And you'll have to adjust the settings over here just to get it right. So I'm going to do that now. There we go. I got it right. And then what I'm going to do is go to size and position. I'm just going to decrease it a little bit. Also, it looks like there's black bars here. So I'm just going to crop those out. There we go. Back to size and position. Put this down the bottom here. Back out. And now we have the green screen effect over our video. If you watch my videos till the end, you'll notice that at the end of every there we go. video, we got the green screen effect added. And while we're talking about screen recorders, uh, tip number seven is to record music using a screen recorder. So if you go onto YouTube, you can actually record your screen while watching a video uh, that's playing music that you want added to your timeline. And then what you could do is, I have this Arthur example for an odd reason. And what you could do then is click on this and you can click the detach audio 
and then the audio will be underneath your video. And you can just delete that old thing. Now I've got Arthur playing over the top. We say, hey, be sure to click on this playlist over here or hey. So if you do need music and sound effects added to your video, just screen record your screen over the sound effects or music you want, put it into your timeline and then just detach the audio and you have that audio now in your timeline. Tip number eight, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a crop in effect. So sometimes when YouTubers are talking, you'll see that they kind of zoom in a little bit and then it zooms right back out. And then sometimes they'll do like a slow zoom in on their face. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to do those effects here within LumaFusion. So what all you need to do is just, you need to line up where you want the clip to split. So let's say right here, I want it to zoom in. So I'll just trim the clip by clicking the scissors. I'll scroll over to where I want it to zoom back out. I'm gonna click split again. And then what I'm gonna do is this middle clip in between where I've done the two splits, I can click on the video, click the pencil, and then all I'm gonna do is just zoom in a little bit like that, back out. So now when we get to that spot where it splits, we'll zoom in. So here we go. At the end of every video, I always say, hey, be sure to click on this playlist over here, or hey, be sure to go watch this so video zoomed in, next. And I promote my and it zooms other back out. And I do that effect a lot. But let's say instead of it doing that, maybe you just want it to zoom in. So then all you have to do is what we can do is just fix this back to normal by double clicking on our settings. All we have to do is click a keyframe at the beginning and then at the end of where we want the zoom to end, we can just zoom in as far as we want it to go. And it'll automatically put a keyframe down here. So we got two keyframes. And now when we click play, I always say it's hey, going to do sure a slow zoom in here, all the way hey, up to sure to where we put that keyframe point. And I Tip number nine is to use the presets that are built into LumaFusion. Now, we already talked about the color grading presets, where if we click on this, we can do different color grading effects and use these presets, but there's more presets than that. For example, let's say I want to add text over the top of this video. So I add text, I click edit, and normally then what you would do is you'd go through all the settings here on the right and make all your adjustments every time you want to add text, but you don't have to do that. What you can do is you can have text presets. So I have this text preset, I just click it, and I've got my font set up. I have the uh, shadow behind the text. All I have to do then is click on this and add my text that I want in there. And I'm set because I have this preset set up. You can also make presets for tutorials. So for example, if I click on this, I click presets and I go over to size and position presets. I have one for gaming main screen, which was used for when I made my gaming video. And then I also had the React position set up. So I could easily, instead of just having to crop in my screen every single time whenever I do an iPad video or having to do set it up for the main video, I could just have these presets set up and be able to boof, boof real quick without having to do so much editing. So when you do color grading or you do make text, be sure to save it as a preset. So that way next time you don't have to go through all the work of redoing all your settings and setting it up again. And finally, tip number 10 is to master filmmaking because you can only do so much within LumaFusion with editing, but if you improve your video making skills, it's gonna help your videos so much better. So I actually have two videos here. One of those is if you're a smartphone filmmaker, be sure to check out our how to get the film look with Filmic Pro. Uh, if you're someone who wants to make YouTube videos, I have a video over here showing you how to film yourself on your smartphone, go through all the steps on how you can get set up. So click on one of those videos if you want to continue watching and learning more. And thanks for watching this LumaFusion tutorial.